everyone, welcome back to Pajama Crafts, where I do crafts in my pajamas. If you're new here, my name is Sarah. Thank you so much for stopping by. I have five Valentine's Day DIYs for you guys today. These are not necessarily only for Valentine's Day. They can be for everyday decor as well because they don't really say anything specifically for Valentine's Day. So I don't want to just put them in a little box. I know a lot of people are past Valentine's Day already and on to the spring and Easter decor and I promise you I'm getting there. Um, I just had this one last video that I wanted to share with you guys. I am going to be using some products that were sent to me by Arteza. These are not only Arteza products, but I am using some Arteza products in each DIY and I think they just turned out so pretty. There's also a lot of Dollar Tree and Walmart items, so I hope you stick around and enjoy these DIYs. So they actually sent me two products for this video. The first one is these blocks. These are actually carving blocks. Of course, I am not a wood carver. <laughs> so they said, do whatever you want with them. It even says on the website, you can paint them, you can do whatever. And these make the perfect little chunky pieces of wood for a chunky little farmhouse sign. And I think they turned out so cute. Um, it comes with four smaller pieces that are similar to Jenga blocks, but a little bit bigger and then a bigger kind of chunky block and I just made some cute little signs with them. I think they turned out really cute. How many times can I say cute? I just really like these DIYs in this video. But the second thing that they sent me are these acrylic colors and these paints are beautiful. It comes with so many different colors and I really love how the paint goes on. So I will leave their link in the description. I do uh, have an affiliate code which means that if you guys click through my link and buy any Arteza product that I get a small percentage so thank you so much for helping me out and helping out my channel to grow um, I really appreciate you guys when you do that um, also they are giving you a code to use <laughs> this time a discount code that you guys can use to get 20% off of your order so I will also leave that linked in the description but let's get on with these DIYs and see what I made with this stuff so for the first DIY I'm actually using some removable vinyl that I got off Amazon I will try to leave that linked in the description if I can find it again but I have this left over from when I did some wedding DIYs. If you don't want to use vinyl or don't have any, you can always get some cheap contact paper from Walmart and make a stencil if you have a Cricut. If you don't, um, that's totally easy to still make a sign. I have a few videos on my channel of how you can make all kinds of different signs without a Cricut. I'll leave them linked in the description. They are fall and Christmas, so I'm gonna try to do an updated one soon with like spring or something like that. But there's so many ways that you can make signs without a Cricut. I'm just using what I have on hand. If you want to use contact paper to make a stencil with your Cricut and use paint, that's a lot cheaper and I do have a video on how I do that as well. I just use Walmart contact paper now instead of Dollar Tree because Dollar Tree tends to leave a sticky residue on my projects, which is not cool, Dollar Tree. Come on, step up your game. So I had this little plaque that I did use in our wedding, um, just a little sign for our wedding, but since I used the removable vinyl, I just went ahead and peeled off the words that I had on there. It was just for a guest book sign like it said where to sign and obviously I'm never gonna use that again but this is the most adorable little plaque that I got from Hobby Lobby I think it was just a dollar or two on sale um, so that's where I got that it's really cute and I just took off that vinyl and added on hugs and kisses I guess this one is a little bit more Valentine's y but it's really neutral in the colors that I used and I apologize, but I don't even have like a cute picture of this one to put at the end for how it turned out. I mean, you'll see how it <laughs> turns out at the end, but I wasn't even able to take a really nice staged picture or anything like that because I'll be honest with you guys and you can laugh. I usually say don't judge me, but go right ahead on this one because I cannot even find this sign. I don't know if it fell down off my craft table and into a pile of wreaths I have on the floor or if my two-year-old ran off with it. I have no idea where this thing even is. <laughs> But when I find it, um, that's going to be really nice. And 
maybe when I find it, I'll send it out in a giveaway. <laughs> I'm always rambling on and get behind on telling you guys what I used in my DIYs, but these little wooden letters were given to me. I believe they were from Oriental Trading Company. I think when I used to work there, my boss gave them to me since she knew I liked crafting, um, but you could find similar ones on Amazon, I'm sure. I will try to find some similar ones and link them in the description, but they're just so cute. I did use Mod Podge on the back of them instead of hot glue because last time I used hot glue, I just couldn't get the dot small enough that it wasn't spilling out from behind the letters, and I hate that look. I just feel like it's so messy, so I just painted some Mod Podge on the back with a brush that I didn't care about and then I distressed it with some of my Arteza paint and I really love how this one came out. Of course you don't have to distress it at all and you could have painted the letters um, white so that all the letters would match and it would be a more of a crisp look but you guys know if you have been with me for very long that I love to distress everything so if you're coming to my channel make sure you love that too or just leave it off because I do it on almost every single project. So for the next DIY I am using the smaller blocks from Arteza and this berry red and watermelon color and I just staggered these did two red two pink and <laughs> I actually left um, two of the sides not painted so that I wouldn't waste any paint because this paint is really nice. I also like that I only had to do one coat with these darker colors. That's all I needed. Um, and it was plenty opaque. It looked really nice. Um, I did go ahead and leave two sides with no paint so I wouldn't waste any since I'm going to be gluing this together. Um, but then I realized later that the top part uh, was not painted, so I had to go back and paint that over again. Random interjection. In my last video, I was giving away a sign. Um, it's from the love chapter, and if you guys are interested in that, that giveaway will still be open until Saturday is when I will go and pick a winner. So if you want to know how to enter into that, if you want to win that sign that I made, um, I will leave that video linked in the description as well so you can go watch it and comment on it to be entered into that giveaway. I will also of course have all of my social media linked in the description as well which includes a Facebook group that I have where you guys can go and share all of your beautiful creations. I love to see what you're working on and I also have my Instagram down there where I share more personal life and pictures of the kids and activities that we're doing and things like that. I also started a new channel recently called The Other Side of Sarah. Um, I will have that linked in the description. Make sure you're subscribed there if you enjoy content like uh, lifestyle, mommy, and a little bit of music. Um, so that's some of the stuff that I've been doing lately, so make sure you check it all out in the description. So I wasn't kidding when I said I love to distress everything, so I went in with that cream color um, and distressed the red and the pink, and I just, I feel like it made it so perfect. <laughs> You'll see here, the top part of that red block is not painted, and when I went to, like, put the sign together, I realized, oh my goodness, that's the top, and it's not even painted. So I had to go back, paint over it, and then distress over it again. <laughs> But it's okay. It turned out really pretty. Now I did go ahead and use hot glue on this just for the purpose of the video and getting this done quicker so that I could get it into the video for you guys. But it was already falling apart by the time um, I wasn't even finished with it. I was just putting on some embellishments and it was already falling apart. So I suggest if you're going to use any kind of glue, make sure it's wood glue or something better than just plain old hot glue. For wood, it just doesn't work. Random question of the video, first of all, do you decorate for Valentine's Day at all? And if you do, do you use the traditional colors or do you like to add those bright reds and pinks? Or do you stick with more neutral colors like some of the other DIYs that I'm going to be doing in this video? So here I am fixing that mistake. Don't worry, we all make mistakes. And the best part about crafting is that you can usually fix it. And if you can't, just scrap it and start over. <laughs> um, and that's what I do a lot of times. Sometimes I don't really like how my craft came out at all and I might just redo the entire thing. 
Now, at this point, I wasn't really sure where I was going with this sign, but I knew that I wanted to have some embellishments on it, so I decided to take some twine and just wrap that around the side. Um, it might be a little much for some people with all of the greenery and florals that I added to this. You can just add twine or something like that with maybe a little bow or something. And honestly, I might go back and do that later and take that greenery off because it's just a little much for me. But I do think it came out really cute. And I even asked Zach if he thought it was too much and he said no. So <laughs> I guess to each his own, I really think it did turn out cute, but maybe I just like things a little more simple these days but I just used some old greenery and florals that I had on hand to pull pulled a few small pieces off the pink is from Michael's last year I just grabbed one bundle I think it was maybe like seven dollars but it came with so much on there it's really pretty and I've been using it for a long time um, and then the lamb's ear type uh, leaves were actually from a wreath that I found at uh, Michael's I believe or Hobby Lobby it was half price it was really really cheap and I just wanted the greenery so I just grabbed it and pulled those pieces off you can also get regular lambs ear at Walmart for like two dollars a bunch I think and if you're just using small pieces it will last you quite a long time I just added my little twine bow in the middle to kind of cover up where the greenery met and then I wanted to add a little um, you know hearts or something to the side so I cut out some hearts from my Cricut you can literally just draw a heart on there that's how this heart is even supposed to look It's just kind of messy and drawn on I'm not very good with that kind of stuff though so I just since I do have a Cricut I just went that route and I actually made a stencil with my contact paper so all you have to do if you already have a Cricut and you don't need like all the steps I will just kind of give you a short little tutorial basically you use contact paper and instead of vinyl and you can put your setting on washi tape just go to the custom settings and pick washi tape um, if you're on the vinyl setting it'll cut right through because it's too thin um so I just do that and then instead of you basically you just do reverse weeding so you you take out the piece that you want to be on your sign if that makes sense because you're gonna do the paint over it like a stencil and you should be able to see what I'm saying here um, but I think it just came out so so cute and I really like it let me know if you would have left off the greenery and just did the twine or if you are all about the greenery and florals on this one like I said if you want a more in-depth tutorial on how to make the stencils with the contact paper I will leave that video linked in the description it's almost a year old I think so <laughs> forgive me because I was a very new beginner to Cricut at that time and now I know a lot more so ignore my questions because I already figured that out now but if you have any questions for me about Cricut or anything like that go ahead and ask I am not an expert so I really don't know too much yet is why I haven't shared any tutorials or anything like that really using my Cricut um, because I feel like I'm still a beginner myself but I will say that Jennifer Maker and there's also uh, what's their name Ooh, I can't remember there's a few different um, channels out there that are oh makers gonna learn that's what it's called anyway those two channels are really good for learning stuff about Cricut so I'll try to leave their channels linked in the description too if you have a Cricut and you don't know where to start they are a really good place to start here I go just rambling again if you sense a random change in my voice it's because it is many hours later and Brie is in bed and I am finishing this voiceover a little bit later so I have to start talking a little bit quieter uh, but on to the next DIY I am just painting this chunky block of wood to make another sign using the cream color I just did two coats on this piece of wood because I wanted it to be a little more opaque 
If you're enjoying this video so far, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more DIYs like these in the future and listen to me ramble on and on as I do. Now I did make another stencil with my Cricut with my contact paper from Walmart. I used the Duck brand and it just works so perfectly. I heard that some people think it's a little too sticky um, for like to use as transfer tape. I use a colored one for my stencil so that I can see it a little bit better when I put it onto my project. And then I use the clear duck brand uh, of the contact paper to use as a transfer tape. And some people say that it's a little too sticky. I've never had a problem with it, but if you do, you can just push it down on some uh, like fabric or something and pull it back up and then use it and that'll make it a little less sticky for you. I wanted my letters to be black on this one and they didn't have a black color in the Arteza uh, paints that I received so I just went ahead and used my ink chalk paint and that's with the Waverly chalk paint and I just used a flat sponge brush to stipple that on there and of course like anything else you can use a regular stencil or whatever you want maybe some paint markers this kind of writing you could pretty easily do um, just free handing it as well but I am not the best at that so I just went ahead and made a little stencil since I do have that available to me I used some more of those little wood letters to write the word loved. And like I said, this does not have to be a Valentine's Day decor piece. I just like to use any um, sentiments that has to do with love for Valentine's Day, but then I can also use them throughout the rest of the year. And so that's why I choose words like these because these are good things to remember throughout the entire year. Like you are loved, that can be used at any time of year. Now I like using the Mod Podge from Dollar Tree. I've noticed lately instead of getting the bigger one, I've heard that it's actually cheaper to get the one from Dollar Tree even though it's smaller. Um, it's actually cheaper for the amount that you get. That's what I've heard, don't quote me on that. Um, but I actually really like it because my big one, the lid always gets glued on so tight and I have to run it under hot water to get the lid off every time. But the small one just has a little pop top so it's much easier to use. And when you open it, it just pops that little piece out that gets dried in there and you can use it much, I think it's just much more user friendly. Now, of course, I wanted to distress this a whole bunch and just make it look really old and kind of vintage, but I just love the feel of this one, how neutral it is. Let me know down below what you guys think of this one, and like I said, if you like the brighter colors or the more neutral. This is cute as is, but I just felt like it needed a little something extra, and Zach said, yeah, you need to put something on that side. So I went ahead and added a little bit of twine. If you watched my previous video, my Dollar Tree haul, um, I mentioned that I prefer different thicknesses of twine for different uh, DIYs. So this twine is from Dollar Tree. They have thicker ones at Walmart. but. Um, I just like to have my options, so 
I think a little bit thinner look better on this really small sign. So for the last DIY, I made another contact paper stencil. By the way, all of these SVGs that I created um, in my Cricut design space, I will have linked below. So if you want to use them, if you have a Cricut and you are subscribed to the design space, then you can go ahead and use the SVG files that I will share in the description. Um, but this one, I just picked another Bible verse, part of the love chapter, and I wanted to add this to a kitchen towel for a long time. I had one left. Um, I get these kitchen towels from Walmart. They come in a three pack and I think they're around like $8, which is not bad for three really good quality hand towels and they have the red ticking stripes, I think it's called. And I really, really like the look of them. So I decided to add this saying to the towel and I actually had fabric paint that Arteza sent me a long time ago and I had been planning this DIY for a while so I figured why not throw it into this video with the other Arteza supplies and so I went ahead and used that fabric paint on here and it works beautifully. Now I'm not sure if you can actually wash it um, but I'm just using it as a decorative towel anyway and um, I'm, I guess if I throw it in the washer, I'll let you guys know how it turns out. Now, I think I said that this was my last DIY, which was a lie. I think there's one more after this one, so keep watching to the end if you want to see all of them. The last one is my very favorite DIY that I did in this video.
on to the final DIY. This one is my absolute favorite. I have this uh, wooden plaque from Walmart that I got last year to use for a DIY for our wedding and again I used the removable vinyl on it from Amazon um, but this one when I took off the vinyl it did peel a little bit of the paint off so you could see where the words were underneath so I just took a little bit more of that cream color of the Arteza paint that they sent me and kind of did like a little whitewash over it. I made sure to kind of go along the whole entire thing so it wasn't too obvious of the two different shades of white. Now I got these hearts from Dollar Tree the other day and I thought they would just be perfect for this sign. I wanted to leave them kind of that raw wood color but I just decided to take a little bit of the uh, chocolate, yes, chocolate brown paint and just um, kind of distress that onto the earth bring out the wood grain a little bit more and make sure that they showed up really well on the sign. I always make sure to start out with a really dry brush and then as I go I kind of get a feel for how much paint is coming off the brush onto my project and then I can add a little bit more if I want to and I always try to go a little bit more heavy handed towards the edge of my project and I always start at the edge and move across. I never start in the middle because I don't want the uh, kind of where like you can see where the line started and I just think that that's like really obvious that you distressed it yourself and it doesn't look as natural. I like it to look more like um, it's actually old and vintage and distressed from being around for a while if that makes sense. Next, I'm using these wood cutouts that I found at Dollar Tree. It comes with three in a pack for the words, and then they also had some different uh, shapes like flowers and little animals and things that come with like three different kinds in a pack, which were really, really pretty as well. But this one I am just using today. Um, these are kind of a chipboard type material. I don't know exactly how to explain it. They're not like real wood. Um, and so they are a little bit delicate. The F was actually almost falling off, but that's okay since I'm gluing it down. I wasn't worried about it. I wanted to distress it a little bit so that it would go well with the hearts. And then I was very pleasantly surprised to see that it almost made it look like wood grain. So I really, really like how this part turned out. Again, I used Mod Podge for the back of this just because hot glue seems to spill out from any tiny delicate things and I just don't like the look. I don't think it looks uh, very put together and just looks kind of sloppy to me whenever I can see hot glue. That's maybe just a pet peeve of mine, but I did go ahead and use Mod Podge for this part too. just gluing down some more leaves from that wreath I took apart that I told you about earlier from a different DIY. I still had some greenery left over from it so I went ahead and used a few pieces on this project and one little cotton stem that I took off of a bunch from Walmart. Those are my favorite cotton stems that I found so far that look the most realistic to me anyway. I'm sure they have nice ones at Hobby Lobby and stuff too but Walmart has some really really nice ones. 
Next, I just distressed the whole project a little bit more, and that was all I did for this one. It turned out to be my favorite, and I just think it's so beautiful. Let me know down below if you guys have a favorite or if you like all of them like me. If you made it to the end of this video, comment I made it down below so that I know. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!